So we get the green flag from the marshal. We'll throw the lights to the top of the screen for you. There on the left-hand side. The engine note rises, so too does the excitement. Lando Norris with a brilliant start. Ferdinand Habsburg seed to bog down there. Can Maximilian Gunter take advantage of that? Well, the one that has taken advantage is uh, Joel Eriksson, who finds himself into P2. Oh, and there's a collision already, and a car invertedly. Uh, yes, it was uh, someone so pricked himself going into turn one and clattered into two others. Not entirely sure who that is at the moment. Uh, we see Habsburg has dropped down to fifth place. Gone through third. Islet P4 as they uh, flow around the first few corners and safety car has been called. Dave, safety car has been called. So no uh, no surprise there. One of those involved in that was uh, Ralph Aron. The other one that was involved in that and is upside down is the David Beckman car, the Van Amersfoort driver in uh, car number 55. So uh, David Beckman then uh, as the team are on the scene very very quickly indeed here we can see it again how did that happen and i wonder if that was uh, possibly guan yu Zhu or someone from that far back there's the 55 car on the outside so yeah it is you he outbreaks himself goes into the side of aron who then hits beckman and beckman gets turned over in the gravel trap and to be fair, Dave, this is one of the reasons why we hear an awful lot of tarmac runoff areas replacing uh, gravel traps, because sometimes yes. they can actually flick a car over like that. Look at the reaction of Rene Rossin then on the uh, very left-hand side of your picture there. He's the team boss of uh, Prima Power Team. And there you can see the cars are both and it just digs in, it, it digs into that gravel, doesn't it? And what's happened actually is because it has rained overnight, it's actually there's an awful lot of more compact dirt and gravel in there so it's probably just hit like a, a lump that's actually tripped the car over um ralph aron is clearly he's out of the car and he, he's 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 okay it's it that was really an unlikely move by guan yuju that was never going to come off he's completely outbreaked himself and unfortunately caused an accident uh, but for the moment uh, the uh, the team personnel track team personnel are looking at uh, getting dave beckman's car righted and this is not a job of a moment, Dave, because you need to make sure that you, you don't want to you, you, you don't want to just flick the car over. Um, so it needs to be a careful process, and that's what these guys were very professional. Know Absolutely. exactly what they're doing. This is what they're working at at the moment. So David Beckman, then, of course, we uh, hope all is okay. But as uh, Leah said, all the precautions will be taken. There, you can see as the car just it it just bogs down doesn't it and that's uh, what tips it over so there the uh, marshals very carefully lifting the car up and uh, the medical team are on there as well to make sure that he is uh, perfectly okay now of course the integrity and the safety integrity of these uh, formula 3 european championship cars is outstanding isn't it and therefore um particularly first turn the speed had not been built up um he was just clattered in truthfully a completely innocent bystander ah. Absolutely, completely innocent bystander. And it's worth mentioning as well that the up, one of the upgrade packages that Delara delivered this yes. year was actually a safety upgrade package. So there's a more bulk in the front of the car where the uh, suspension linkages is, uh, sp suspension linkages are, and all of these upgrades. And uh, we can see him getting out. And, that, and that's it. The, the marshals and the medical team will always tell a driver now to stay put in the car until they can actually attend the scene and make sure that the driver is fine, make sure that there's, there's no issues mm. that could, uh, could cause any, any difficulty. Um, it's all to make sure that the driver is extracted from the car in the safest manner possible. These marshals, they train the extraction teams train and train and train don't they so the medical team's just there making sure that everything is and, and in fairness we saw within the gap through the marshals there that uh, uh david was actually uh, trying to get himself out of the car but he's being advised just to you know take it easy let us uh, control the situation here because what we don't want to do we want to make sure you're absolutely fine and it, it, it's reminiscent to a degree of uh, it was a crash at Le Mans about five years ago with anthony davidson yes he had a massive crash in there he is out of the car, of the car. Look. and well done to all the team down there and Great to hear all the applause as well as uh, he is out of the car and to all intents and purposes looks absolutely fine, walks away. It's more, a bit dizzy. more cross than anything else, I should think. <laughs> of course, his race has been completely compromised through actually no fault of his own. Uh, and just, just to finish, it, it goes back to that accident with uh, Davidson and Lamont three years ago. He actually got out of the car not realising he had a, a broken vertebrae. Of course. Uh, so. It, it's very, very, very strict in this now. The driver stays in the car until he can be properly extracted by the officials. Can you recall the event at Spa a couple of years ago when Mac, uh, let me Gust think of a Gustavo Menezes. Menezes. Yeah. 
<laughs> for, for whatever reason, um, they were not quite as gentle as that car, with that car being turned back onto its four wheels. Yeah, he, he, Gustavo got flicked clean over there yeah. after the car went on top of the barrier. That was a 